So let's talk about the control board a bit. Um, this is the brains of the whole system and it controls everything within the stove, when the motors come on and the, when the auger turns and when to shut it off and all those kind of things. So the first thing of course is the on off button. So we're going to push the on off button now and it's going to go into a startup mode. When it goes into startup mode, as you can hear, the convection motor comes on on full blast and uh, it will turn down in a minute or so. And you can see in the lights here, right now it's green, but it's going to turn to red and it's going to remain red uh, throughout the complete startup period, which could be about 15 minutes, 12 to 15 minutes until it gets hot enough. And every time this auger light goes on, that shows that the auger is actually turning. So the auger only turns a very little bit at a time, drops a few pellets in and stays off for a period of time and then comes back on depending on what you're asking it to do. So on low, it might come on for two seconds and shut off for eight seconds. On two, it might come on for three seconds, shut off for seven seconds, and, and so on. This is our switching from manual to auto, uh, for auto being for a thermostat. So you hook a thermostat to it. The thermostat asks it to bring the temperature up. The stove will come up to whatever level setting you've asked it to do, and also up to the temperature on the thermostat. And when it reaches that, it will go into idle mode or low, uh, for 30 minutes to an hour and if it still hasn't called for more heat the thermostat it will shut itself off. So if you put it into high low just click this down one what that means is now it's still hooked to a thermostat but the uh, it never shuts off so it will do the same things as it did with the auto uh, as far as going down to idle and whatnot but it won't shut off it'll just go to idle come back up when the thermostat wants more heat. This is a good thing to have when it's in the cold, cold winter and just to keep the stove running so that the, the steel door we talked about, the heavy steel door, the, the extra heat chambers and the thick steel inside all remain hot so you'll get more efficiencies out of the stove when it's really cold outside because it won't be off for very long. Uh, and on auto, spring and fall, when uh, it's warm out so the stove might shut off for two, three hours at a time, then it's gonna be more advantageous for you to leave it in auto. If you don't have a thermostat, you put it in manual, and you can set the level of heating over here as to what level you want. And you can see on this one here, we're on low, so I'm gonna move it one, it's to two, three, four, and five. So as we talked about earlier, um, this is the, gonna give, drop more pellets in, they're obviously gonna turn on more, or if you're comparing it to a car, you're gonna step on the gas real hard, and you're gonna use up more fuel. So during the startup mode, Although these lights work, they really don't do anything until the stove has got enough to temperature. We've got a room fan here. This button allows us to adjust the convection fan, so either high or low. Uh, it will do it on its own too, but if you want it higher, for instance, you push it, and you can hear that it picks up to high right away. So if you want to heat up the room faster, that's going to move more air quicker, and then down to low again for uh, when you don't need it. So the other trim is uh, to allow you to adjust the temperature range. So for instance, if uh, one is or two is uh, not warm enough and three is too hot in the room, then it will allow you to adjust it. So by pushing the auger trim button and the level, so I want to move up to partway between two and three, so I'm going to push the auger trim and the level button, I'm going to hold it, all the lights are going to go, and now it's going to have moved a half a point. So now we got two and a half. It's something you can play with. It only works on uh, levels uh, uh, two, three, and four but it gives you that fine tuning and only on manual is it worth bothering adjusting. Now the manual auger, this means that we can push this button here and the, it will move the auger manually. So on our J2000, the larger model, if the shaft is empty because it ran out of pellets or it's new, it's gonna be advantageous for you to push this and hold it in and it will continually turn the auger and it'll fill the shaft faster and get a fire quicker. So when I push this, it's gonna turn the auger on and it's gonna leave it on uh, the entire time. Okay, now we're going to open a side panel and we're going to uh, show you how to hook up the thermostat to this and also talk about a fuse that's inside on the control board. So we just take our screw and undo this draft knob here, take it off, and uh, we've undone the screws already in the top and the bottom. We're going to open it up. Remember now, before we open it, that we've unplugged it. Uh, always unplug it before opening this door to make sure that. Uh, nothing starts or you don't get electrocuted and want that. So to hook up the thermostat, this is the thermostat block here, the blue block. So inside here on this side of it is the two holes. Your thermostat wires will come through the back of the stove. You put it into here and just tighten these screws and that's all there is to putting the thermostat on it and then put the thermostat wherever you'd like. Now on the bottom here is a fuse. 
Now this fuse is important if you, if you get a power surge, um, something with hydro, anything like that, or short inside the stove, uh, it'll pop this fuse out. So if for some reason nothing works at all, you can't get any lights on, and yet you know that the plug-in is working good at the wall, then uh, that's the next thing to check here. I want to talk a little bit about the draft control. Uh, Jamestown is one of the few stoves on the market that has a manual draft control. What this does is adjust the air coming into the stove. And as I mentioned earlier, it's all about air inside of a pellet stove and its movement. So when it's like this, it's wide open. When it's like this, it's closed off. Although you can't close it off completely, it, it, you slow the air down quite a bit. So this is adjusted if uh, different pellets, the different altitudes um, and that kind of thing. What you really want to accomplish is the hottest possible burn, torch-like burn that you can by adjusting this. And once you've reached that torch-like flame, then you'll leave that alone. Let's have a look through the fresh air pipe and show you just exactly what's happening there so you can really get a grasp on that. So as we move the dial back and forth, you can see that it closes a butterfly inside your fresh air intake. Now this fresh air intake is hooked to fresh air outside of the house. So you can see that it opens and closes that air, allowing more and more air to come in as it would have choke on a carburetor and uh, for those who know that and, and so on. Now we talked earlier about what a good flame should be and all the air damper worked and whatnot. Now I want to show you what happens. So what we've got here now is we've got a good flame. This is the flame that it should be, the way it should be burning. Notice the torch-like like, torch -like effect on it. You always want to have that torch-like effect. If it gets lazy or if it gets sloppy, uh, kind of like this, this is called a lazy flame. So what I've done is I've blocked the air off of it. So that's what would happen if the stove gets dirty or uh, the outside of it gets dirty, the pipes get dirty, the fire pot gets plugged, any of that kind of thing. This is what's going to happen. The fire pot's going to uh, underburn, or it'll appear like it's overfilling, but it can't burn the fuel that's being dropped in it because it doesn't have enough air. So we want to make sure that we get enough air going through it. So I've released it now, and the flame's going to come back, and it's that simple and that quick. So air movement. It's all about air movement. Now another item on the control board that you should be aware of, and it's also in your manual, is that this is a self-diagnosing control board. So if it becomes an issue where it ran out of fuel, or the auger stopped, or there's a vacuum leak somewhere that's creating, uh, that created the auger to stop, um, and various items like that, it's going to flash at the different levels. So if it's flashing at level two, for instance, then level two in your owner's manual will tell you what that problem is and what you should look for in order to fix it. Same again on thoughts on level three. Uh, look into level three and then see what the problems are and how you should address them. A little bit more about a uh, safety feature on this, uh, on this stove. If for any reason a door opens or there's a large vacuum leak or uh, there's a change in pressure inside because this runs on a negative pressure inside, there's a sensor inside of here that senses that and it automatically will shut the auger off, which shuts the fuel off, and the stove will go out. And there'll be indicators on your control board that will flash that will tell you what, what to do in that situation. So if we open this door and left it open, within about 30 seconds that auger is going to shut off. Now the other switch that's on here for a safety switch that shuts the auger off is our hopper switch. Now when you open the hopper lid, there's a switch here on our 2009 and up models that shuts the auger off so that no one gets their fingers stuck in there or anything like that that might happen uh, inside of the hopper. So once you've filled the hopper with pellets, you need to close it and the auger will continue to run. Now if you're filling it up while it's burning, that's not going to be a problem because you'll have plenty of fire to keep it burning, be plenty hot enough so it'll just restart again as long as you do it in a timely fashion. Now, there's a couple other maintenance items that we need to deal with. The door gasket and the glass gasket. Once in a while, after a period of use, these gaskets are either going to get over flat or they're going to start to deteriorate and air will leak through it. And you'll be able to tell in some ways uh, the stove will have a lazy flame in it or the glass may be getting extremely black in a, in a, in a hurry, which also could be caused by bad pellets, but in a lot of cases it's because there's a, a gasket leak somewhere. So again, because it runs on negative pressure, we want the unit to be tight inside of the firebox, so these gaskets may need to be replaced and you can call us and we'll be happy or your dealer will be happy to look after you.